Good day. Today the old hobo will show you his S9 laser. It's a five and a half watt diode laser. Got a power bar here. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a fan here. I just put this board in the window when I want to uh, do laser stuff and I exhaust any smoke or fumes out that way. I made this inexpensive cabinet. I painted it black inside just to absorb any reflections. And I've got little lights there that come on. Um, what else I do in preparation? I turn it on. So this little uh, unit is on. That's the computer. I have an air blast on this uh, machine. I'm going to hook up. Uh, it's hooked up to my compressor. And I can turn on when I'm doing the cut. It feeds into the side of the laser head. I'm going to shut it off right now so it doesn't make uh, noise. <laughs> uh, the purpose of the flush is to flush away the smoke and the fumes. That helps keep the lens clean, otherwise it gets polluted. It also keeps a uh, smoke effect off the workpiece because the smoke itself and the burned products can make a shadow around what you're really wanting to cut in your image. I'm going to show cutting an image today. The uh, laptop here is plugged in. The laptop is really the brains. It runs uh, a free program, Laser GRBL version 7.14.0. But uh, that is the freeware you can use. There are other ones you can purchase that have more capabilities. So far for me, this has been just fine. So to describe what's going on here, this is a bamboo laminated cutting board from the dollar store. I think it cost me three bucks. And I'm going to make a logo there for somebody uh, who's doing me a favor. A yacht club that's uh, allowing me to use their facilities, their ramp, for our upcoming trip. So what I've done on it, I don't know if you can see, I've put some uh, tape on just to indicate the center of the workpiece because I can locate this by eye to the center of the workpiece. And I'll be able to center the image on the workpiece. There's this little block here. I think it's a, uh, I forgot what it is here. It's a 15 millimeter block. It's the right size anyhow. 10 millimeter, a uh, 20 millimeter block. Sorry, it's a 20 millimeter block. Uh, I set it, there's a portion of the carriage here I set underneath. There are two knurled nuts on the back and I wish they were wing nuts. They'd be a little easier to loosen, but I just, you hear that hit? It's actually setting the distance to the workpiece for ideal focus. There is a good range of focus on this. I have, uh, I've cut some curved surfaces and it's fallen off several millimeters uh, and it's still done a good crisp image. And if you're doing multiple passes at high power so that you can cut through, you, you may do the first millimeter and then you do another pass, another millimeter and so on all the way through. As long as it stays in focus, it can go deeper and deeper and deeper with each pass. So I've got this, whoops. I've got it set for focus, and I'm setting up the piece in the middle. I'll probably have to move that again after. I've got the fan on, exhausting out the back. Power is on here. I'll turn on the air after. I'm going to move over now to the computer, and I'll show you how I suit the image for this board. Here's the web address to download your own copy of Laser GRBL. Put it on the device you are going to connect to your S9 laser. There we are. Laser GRBL booted up. We have a green plug there and it says COM3 and so on. That basically tells us that the, uh, the laser over there is turned on and ready to work with us. I'm going to click on this file thing here for file name. There's this logo I want. 
there's a preview of it. Uh, we can do some things here with brightness, contrast, and so on. I think elsewhere we can do some cropping and so on. I prefer to do all the cropping and other things um, either in Paint, Microsoft Paint, or with the freeware GIMP, G-I-M-P, which is a freeware version of uh, Photoshop. Maybe not as capable, maybe not as uh, uh, easy to use, but uh, what I'm going to do here, conversion tool, we're going to decide what to do. We've got one bit dithering. What that means is fill in all the black or all the gray and make it uh, lines. And we can choose some things here, uh, whether we want to go through this way or vertically or diagonally. Uh, in this case, we're saying dither, which means it's just going to brrr, sort of fill it in pretty much. Uh, one other choice is to vectorize. I'll show you an example of vectorize. Click, whoops, click on vectorize. If you look here, it's hard to see, but anything that is red is an outline of the black. Every black edge, black and white edge, is now a red path. And the computer will trace the perimeters of what is dark or black. So here's a sample of that. This was a solid black image, old hobo, and vectorizing just did an outline of it. Uh, this is the same thing here. Um, I actually had masked it with masking tape to uh, reduce the amount of uh, dark blush I got from the smoke staining of the image. Uh, I put masking tape across and I just left the masking tape off. It peeled off everything except what was in there. I could peel that now. Um, I don't need to use the masking tape now for the most part with the air, uh, air blast, but there are still advantages to masking. I just use plain masking tape here. They do sell masking products you can buy on Amazon. They're for masking your work. They come in, uh, it's basically blue masking tape, something similar, and it can come in one inch, three inch, up to 12 inch. You can buy t something the size of a, um, a paper towel. Uh, roll that is that and it's kind of expensive but for something really fine especially I think if you're doing metal work actually you do need this masking because metal and glass and other things will either transmit the laser light and you'll lose it or also just bounce it back like a mirror and it won't work so that's just a, a little digression there we're not going to vectorize we're going to go with the uh, um, we're going to go with the one bit dithering and they've got some different methodologies. The Floyd Steinberg. Okay, that's fine, whatever that is. Direction, horizontal. Okay, that's good. Uh, 15 lines per millimeter. I'm going to reduce that. That's going to be take too long to process, too many lines, too much uh, whatever. Uh, let's just go. I'm experimenting with this. 10, 5 lines per millimeter. Yeah, we'll go whoops come on seven lines per millimeter line preview okay we've got a line preview right there fine uh, there's a bunch of other stuff here you can do but uh, that's for processing if you want to crop it do other things but we're just going to go next so we have a dialog box it allows us to specify what speed we want the laser to run at and what power range we want to use. So engraving speed, I'm leaving it at the default of 1,000 millimeters per minute. That's about uh, a meter a minute, which is about 39 inches a minute. There's something here, the mode, dynamic power. And that just means if we had an image here, like a grayscale, black, gray, white, it would assign the power level based on how black it was. And so... Right now, it's set to range from zero, which it means zero percent, or a thousand, which is a hundred percent. I'll show you something else: power versus speed. This program and most programs you get to run lasers will allow you to run test billets. Okay, and what this shows is the speed of the laser from a slow speed up to full speed. And you can see that 
in the boxes here, it goes from dark to much lighter. This right here down here is power. So you start with a low speed, this in this case about 30%, going up to high speed. And you see it's in this little piece of uh, cheap material from a tangerine box. Um, oops, oops, it's falling apart there. Um, it's actually cutting through. So you can run a test coupon on some material you're not familiar with and determine what the best setting is for you, depending what you want it to do, if you want it to cut through or you just want to make a, a nice dark image. So let me turn out this light. Down at the bottom here is all about sizing. And right now we won't worry about auto size. Um, this image has a certain number of pixels, a certain, a certain size, whether you create it in Photoshop or whether it was taken with a camera with a certain whatever. If you did auto size, it would go based on that. Instead, we're going to manually change the size. And you see this little lock icon? That means if we change the width here, and I'm going to change the width to uh, 210, 210 wide. And when I change that, kept the same aspect ratio because that lock is on and it's going to make it 189.5 high. Okay, cool. Offset, I'm not going to offset. I'm going to leave it centered. I have never used that offset function. But uh, now I'm going to go create. And we'll wait. Okay, finally I've got an image 100% processed and ready to go. In the meantime, I spent some time. I did not like this image. It was coming up a little ragged. It was a very poor bitmap from a website. I was able to smooth it out a bit, get the contrast the way I wanted it. And I also reduced the uh, line feed to three millimeters, uh, rather three passes per millimeter. And that kept the file size and the runtime to a, uh, a minimum. Right now here, this is how we center the work. We can set our laser at the center of the workpiece, or we can set it in the back uh, or the bottom left corner. So if I were to choose this right here, it would center to the bottom corner. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on center to center workpiece. Now, there was a move, you heard, the laser moved to where it thought the center was. What I'm gonna do is, it's not powered right now, there's no command active, I'm going to center it between those marks. And you can see, uh, this is just a red shield to protect from the laser, but that's the center of the laser there. And from the side here, I'm gonna go here. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, you know what I might do? I've got an idea. I may put some text down here after, in which case I'm going to center this up a little higher. Okay, center of work, about five and a half inches. Five and a half inches. I'm going to center that right about there. So that's a, a change on the fly. I decided I want to center the image on the upper part of the workpiece. Um, oh, I need to have my glasses ready. Here's a piece of cement board I use when I'm working on something thin. You can see it will scorch through. But I'm going to have these glasses ready because despite the, the red, there's sometimes a, a arc or two that you can get flashed at through there. Um, okay, I just hit this center again just to make sure. It did not move, so it uh, tells me it's in the center. So up here, there is the command there where it uh, gave repositioning command to move. Now I do this, cross your fingers, I'm going to click on that. Oh, graving, about to start. Ah, put your glasses on, put your glasses on. Ah, you don't need them, but. I sort of do. Okay. See a flashing? Just mind, don't mind me while I play with the tripod here. There we go. Oh, shoot. I have to get rid of that tape. I 
I have to get rid of this tape here. Yeah, I'll get rid of it. I forgot to take it off. Now, there's no chance of me getting hit by the laser here. Because uh, it's got that shroud on it would bump me out of the way. So we're going to let that sit. You can see that the image is starting to show. There's not a whole lot of a lot of contrast there. So we'll close the there's a paint stick for a prop. We'll drop that down. I'll try to do this one-handed. And we'll say bye-bye. And when should we come back? Estimated time, 42 minutes, some odd seconds. And you can see here, completion, it's completed the green so far. And it's gonna work up the image. And you can see we ended up with a, a gray, We've, we're gonna have, a, well, the image is in reverse. But we have a uh, the black will be what the white will be what's black cut by the laser. This will uh, be almost white on the inside, and this will be totally white on the outside. Let's wait and see what the finished product looks like. Ah, I forgot the air at the beginning here. You notice how it started at the bottom, scanning back and forth, back and forth. See how light it is there, how dark it is there? I forgot to turn on the air assist. And one other effect of the air assist is it uh, adds cooling air, yeah, but it also adds just air to aid combustion. Uh, this is with air assist, the lighter stuff is without. So I said, I can't continue. This piece right here, I'll run it through the planer and I'll use it for something else. So what I've done, I made myself, oops, a note that says air assist, yes. I put in this larger thing here, this is actually a cutting board, this is a $4 piece from the uh, dollar store, uh, and I've got it all set to line up again, so this is sort of like tape two and a half, I guess, so I know this one thing, I have tape here and here, just to hold this in place in case I casually bump it. It's not going to hold very much, but if you have a very small piece, let's say you're doing a toaster made out of cork, when you turn on the air assist, it will levitate. It's a, a demonstration of the uh, Bernoulli effect, so you need to tape it down well. But this is heavy enough, it won't move. So, say goodbye for the Say goodbye for now, that's just the compressor kicking in. Well, here's the final product. It turned out fairly well, and I'm happy to be done. It'll make a nice gift. Yeah, if I do anything else with uh, the laser here that's uh, remarkably different, if I learn something uh, new, I'll post something on it.